Hi everybody, in this update I want to walk you through how I added sound to the game. I added sounds for drone and player lasers for the two different explosions, as well as some background noise just to give it a little more atmosphere. And I'm pretty happy with the results and it wasn't as hard as I thought it was going to be. I'll give you a quick demo here. I'll just turn the sound up so you can hear it. So you can see the nice background noise as I play the game. So the two lasers have different sounds and whether I explode or the drones explode, that, those are different sounds as well. So I'll let that, I'll just turn that down and can let that continue to play. Okay, the first thing I had to do was import the mix library and then add a couple of things to the game struct. I have an array of sounds and each uh, sound type is a chunk. Now chunks are meant to be played uh, you can play them across multiple channels, whereas the next one, the background sound effects, is a music type. And music, uh, there's only one channel available for music. So you can have only one music playing at, at a time uh, across one channel. Uh, but chunks, you can have multiple chunks um, playing across multiple channels at the same time. Uh, to keep track of which sounds I want to play, I made a new enum for a sound ID. And so I just have player laser, drone laser, and the two different explosions. This just makes it easier for me to keep track of the sound that I want to create. Now, initializing the library is much like initializing the font or, or the image library that I did in previous videos. It's pretty easy. I did have to add the init audio flag here to my first SDL initialization. And then just down below here, I can initialize. Here we go. Uh, mix. So I have mix init and I initted the OGG file type. I tried to get some MP3s working for the sounds, uh, but it wasn't working for me and I couldn't work around it. So I thought it was just easier. I took the MP3s that I had and I put them through Audacity to convert them to OGG files. Um, also, where I got the files, I found them on a website, uh, Pixabay, I believe it was. I will put a link for it down below. They were free and I didn't uh, have too hard of a time finding some sounds that I liked. So it's a good resource. And if you know of other resources for good sound effects for games that would be free or you know not so expensive, I'd really like to hear about it. So let me know down below, please. So I initialized mix here, check for errors, of course, and defer the quit, just like we do with the other libraries above. And then I have to open audio. I don't know much about audio, but the first argu argument here is for frequency. And I just went with a frequency that I found on another tutorial online. And I'll share that link as well, um, because they had a bit more to say about it. Uh, then the default format and stereo. So it takes in the number, uh, number of channels. So one would be for a mono and two would be for stereo. So I just made the constants up above here so it make it easier for you to read. And then uh, chunk size, uh, 1024. So check for errors, of course, uh, right below. And if all goes well, then we allocate channels. Not to be confused with the channel here where I have stereo. Um, this is for mono or stereo, whereas allocate channels is basically how many sounds can you have playing simultaneously in your game. The default is eight, and I just put an eight here. It seemed to be fine for me. Um, and you can change it. You can make it lower or higher depending on uh, what you need and how, how much your system can handle really. Then once the channels are allocated, then I can load my WAV files. So just make that a bit smaller so you can see I'm uh, loading directly uh, the OGG files from my assets sound folder. So call, call load wave to load uh, the chunks that you want. Again, chunks are meant to be, you can have uh, many of them playing at once across many different channels. Music is different. Chunk, um, maybe a good rule of thumb is a chunk is something that you want to play repeatedly, whereas music is something you might want to stream over time. Uh, also, what's mentioned in the docs is that a chunk is decoded into memory up front. So it's decoded and loaded once, and then throughout the rest of your program, it will be, it'll be available to you. Whereas loading music, uh, which is what I do for the background music, is decoded on the fly each time that you need it. Now I have the music playing throughout the whole game, so I don't have to worry about that so much. Again, the nuances of all this, I'm not too sure about just yet. This is just my first pass at uh, putting music and sound into the game. Uh, so I load them into the sounds array using the appropriate uh, sound ID, just so I can keep track of them. 
I check for errors and defer free chunk. So I load my four sounds that way. And then down below, I load music. So this is not load wave, this is load music. So it will return a music object, which is what I'm storing in the BG sound effects uh, field on my game struct. Check for errors, defer free music. So that's it. I've got everything uh, loaded uh, where I need it. So the next part would be just before the game loop is I start to play the music. Just call play music. It's very simple. The uh, second argument here, negative one, just means that I want the music to play on an infinite loop. So for this to not sound weird, I of course had to find a sound file that was uh, seamless. And that's what I found and I named it accordingly. And then it was really, really easy to wire up the play sounds. So it's called play channel. Uh, the first time I do it here is when I am rendering the drone lasers. So when the lasers are firing, I want that cool sound to play. So you call mix play channel, negative one here. Let me find, I put notes here in our explode player, explode drone functions. I'll go over those in a second. The first argument is uh, negative one, which means just find the first available channel. Um, rather than cycle through these yourself and keep track of which one's being played, which one isn't, it's best just to use the negative one and then let Mix find the, the channel that's not, uh, not being used, the first one that isn't in use. If you don't do this and you try to track it yourself, then you may find that when you play one sound, it'll cut off another one that's in the middle of playing. And since I have multiple lasers going uh, and multiple explosions going, I use the negative one here, um, and then that just solved that problem. And then, of course... I choose the sound here, so let me see, where were we? Drone laser, play the drone laser. And the zero argument means just play it once and stop. This is how many iterations in the loop. It would be negative one if you wanted this to just keep playing, which of course you don't want for something like this, and put zero for it to play once and then forget it. Uh, I play the player laser sound whenever the player lasers are, are spawned. And then for explosions, of course, now, to make sure um, I'm playing the appropriate sound, before I didn't differentiate between um, player and drone explosions. I would just call explode, pass in the entity, and, and that was it. Uh, but now I just created two wrapper functions, explode drone and explore, explode player, so that I make sure that I'm playing the appropriate sound and then just deferring the rest of it, uh, the actual explode animation to the um, the explode uh, fr function that I had before. So here we go. That's explode and then play channel with the appropriate sound. So either the player explosion or the drone explosion, no loops. So I hope you found this video helpful. Thanks very much for watching. Catch you next time.